Hello, anti novelists. Here we are for another day in the library. We got a break today. It is so nice. It's like 70 degrees and rainy, so I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I got two keyboards rocking. Yeah, because that's how fast I'm working to get this book in your hands. The book is, as you know, Zettelkasten for Fiction, Where Imagination Finds Order, the book that is going to help you get your book written. So what have I been working on today? Let's just take a spin over to the big computer. Oh, hello, kitten. Princesses, hello. I just woke up. I'm having a bath. So today I am working on the chapter, Introduction to Story Architecture, The West Meets East. So I've made this comment a few times over the course of introducing this project and talking about different aspects of it. So I just wanted to pop in and talk a little bit more about that today. As you may recall, I have already made mention in the beginning of part four, which is the foundations of the novel, where I'm talking about the different kinds of story. So yes, I begin up, let's, let me get up to the top here. <clears throat> I begin up at the top of our journey talking about the plot box, chapter two, the plot box. And I talk about the eight story points, the major story points, and how you can use those eight points as kind of a navigational map to chart your way through your story. But I'm also very keen to say there's more than one. There's many, many ways to write a story. So down here in chapter 10 today, I've been working on breaking down exactly what that looks like. So for example, we all are familiar with the two act story structure, the three act story structure, and there's even a four act story structure that takes the three and breaks it into four. That's pretty, pretty common. Everybody understands what that is. But there are a lot more structures that allow us to really dive deep into the kinds of stories that we want to write and what that might look like. So, for example, I just want to give you a little sneak peek because you guys are my people. You're my peeps. So I want to let you have an inside look at what I'm working on here. So today I started working on a, a world story structure that comes from Japan. It originated in Korea, moved across China, and ended up as primarily a Japanese form of storytelling. It also didn't begin as storytelling. It began as poetry. So you might consider this a little kin to what we consider modern day a haiku, right? In a haiku, you've got five syllables, then seven syllables, and then five syllables. And that's how you move the reader through the story is by hitting each of those syllable beats and generally wrapping the whole thing up with a lovely observation or discovery about nature. And if we come over here to the bookcase, and I'm doing this totally on the fly, so I may not be able to lay my hands on the book, but I have a terrific edition of Japanese fairy tales that I have used as a reference. I also have this beautiful little book that has a collection of stories in it. And I'm not going to take it out. You can see it's in this beautiful little covered sleeve. I'll just, okay, okay, I'll take it out. Just but it's this amazingly beautiful little storybook. So I've used a little bit of information from that. I've, I've dipped into my Japanese fairy tales. I've also dipped into, where is it? Uh, this is why I don't do things off the cuff because I can't always lay my hands on them. But somewhere, somewhere on this bookshelf, oh things, I have a very thin volume, which is about, it's about the same size as this little T.S. Eliot copy of The Wasteland, but it's a book about how to write haiku. So the reason I mentioned that is some of these more internationally recognized story structures that I'm going to be walking you through go back very, very far. They've been around forever, which means we've seen lots of amazing examples of them, ways that people have used them. Um, oh, here we go. Bingo. 
an introduction to haiku, anthology of poems. Uh, and then I also refer to, this is a classic, it's even a little laurel paperback from the 50s, Poetry, A Modern Guide. So I dipped into those as I was working through this really cool Japanese system that I'm talking you through. So Kishota Kensu is a four act structure, okay? So uh, in my Zettelkasten, as I'm researching this, it goes obviously under the name of the story form, which is Kishoten Kensu. Each of the syllables has a meaning. I'll get to those below. It goes in my Zettelkasten index under Japanese story structure, under P for plot structure, and under F for the four act structure. So that's where it's filed in my box, in my Zettelkasten. And then I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek at what it means. These are the four syllables. The key is introduction, the show is development, the ten is a twist, and the ketsu is the resolution. So you can see here that it has a very specific structure in the way that it's used. And what's really cool about that, oh, mean kitty, what's really cool about the structural element is that it allows you to lay out a story that doesn't require conflict. Kitty is so excited about this. Look at her happy whiskers. Here's the deal. Traditionally structured Western style conflict stories follow a path, right? They follow a particular set of footsteps through the story. But here, when you're dealing with this traditional Japanese structure, you don't have to follow that conflict structure. Instead, you have this introductory and developmental elements of it, and then you have the twist. This is simply revealing some information or potentially shedding different light on the things that happened up here in the first half of the story, or maybe there's an unforeseen event, but it doesn't have to be a big earthquake and bombs blowing up. It can be something as simple as someone changes their mind, or maybe they come to terms to see from a point of view of another character. But it sends the thing in a very different direction. That's why they call it a twist. And then you get to the resolution and we get to glimpse how the characters respond to whatever this unforeseen bit was. So, that is just one very quick look at this amazing chapter, which is coming together beautifully. It's at 1,367 words. I'm loving it so much. It's literally writing itself. But I think this is going to provide a nice first counterpoint to what we know about the traditional Western conflict-driven eight-plot point narrative. This gives you a very clear mirror that you can look at against that Western structure. So that is today's quick look at how Zettelkasten for Fiction is coming along. I truly am excited to share this with you. I'm having so much fun writing it and I'm loving your questions and your comments so, so much. You guys are like air. Every time I see a comment or I see a new subscriber, I do a little happy dance and even Kitty does a little happy dance. It's just awesome. It's amazing honestly, from the bottom of my heart to have you guys with me on this journey as I write this book for you, because you're part of it. You're in it. And I think about you as I write, and I try to, to chunk things and sort them and explain them in the plainest fashion, but also in a deep and wide fashion so that you have a really robust tool with lots and lots of tools in that box, because I want you to get your book written. I want to hold your book in my hands. That is my wish. So I will leave you there today with just a little sneak peek into the Japanese story structure that provides the first example of a counterpoint to the Western story structure. I'm going to get back to writing. I've got two more sprints in me. I'm feeling good, so I'm going to keep going. And then I have the entire day tomorrow. So at noon, if you want to come over and join us in lilypub.org, we will do two writing sprints from noon to one central time in the Zoom call. From one to two, we will be workshopping chapter one of this book. So we will be workshopping chapter one, part one, which is setting up your system. 
And then from 2 to 3 p.m. Central, we will do two more writing sprints together, which are just co-working sessions. So if you haven't come over and joined us at lilypub.org, which is linked down below, please do. I would love to see you there. I would love to hear about your stories. What are you writing? What are you interested in? Are you stuck? Have you gotten started yet? Um, keep telling me about you and your projects because more than anything, that helps inform what I'm sharing with you because I want to make sure that my arrow hits the target and that I'm answering the kinds of things that you want to know or that you're struggling with. That's why I'm here. So I will leave you there today and I will see you tomorrow.